Yellowstone supervolcano eruption fears spike because geysers are becoming more active. Mac Slavo on uh, the Daily Coin reports. Now we've seen an uptick in the earthquake swarms in Yellowstone, also in California, also in the Long Valley Caldera. And uh, I'll leave a link below again for the Seismo Berkeley, the activity of the earthquakes there, small and large, so that you can uh, ascertain the activity on your own. You can see that even Utah, southern southwest Utah, has been having earthquakes. Even north uh, of uh, Yellowstone in Montana has been having daily earthquakes along the fault lines. And uh, we have to keep in mind that USGS has recently said that the Yellowstone supervolcano is two and a half times bigger than what they thought it was originally, and that it sits on top of a uh, magma plume. So this is the latest. They fear because of the geyser activity becoming more active. Some of Yellowstone's geysers have been more active lately, reigniting fears that this massive supervolcano will erupt. Now, it may not be a big eruption, it could be a small one. They've also recently found that the eruptions in Yellowstone have been about every 6,000 years. We're not talking about the massive ones, we're talking about ones that are still very dangerous for humanity, of course. Now, the sudden bursts of steaming hot water highlight the dramatic nature of Yellowstone, while reminding us all that we are at the caldera's mercy. We even have scientists like uh, Dr. Michio come out recently saying that we have to be very careful. He's warning us of uh, an imminent eruption there any day and uh, that uh, there's a, a Godzilla sleeping underneath Yellowstone like it's a sleeping giant. Now, while average people seem concerned, geologists seem excited and thrilled when Yellowstone steamboat geyser began erupting in 2018. It has been erupting as often as once a week since last March, according to National Geographic, and scientists continue to say the volatile activity is not a sign of an imminent eruption. And Yellowstone Volcano Observatory reported that Steamboat has now set a record by erupting a whopping 32 times in 2018, a personal best for the geyser for a single calendar year. It's the world's tallest active geyser, and at the best of times, it can shoot hot water 300 feet into the air. But it's still just the steamboat geyser. It's not that that has been concerning people. The ear spring geyser, for example, has been almost uh, since 1957. It's erupted spectacularly a few months back and sprayed human garbage from the 1930s all over the National Park. Scientists insist this does not mean an eruption is pending. They say it's a good lesson in how geysers actually work. This is what Michael Poland, the scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory said. As soon as you start to recognize a pattern in the geyser's eruption, then it changes. And as far as geysers go, steamboat is sort of typical in terms of having these sporadic, unpredictable eruptions, Poland said. And he adds, but because it's this reality really tall gal, uh, geyser that has this name recognition, it makes it that much more interesting. But again, it's not just steamboat geyser that has people concerned. Back in 2007 to 2008, the giant geyser went bananas, Poland says. That's another geyser named Giant Geyser. It erupted many, many more times than it had in the past year, and steamboat did not do anything of the sort. Poland says that because there have been no underlying changes to the heat source, which people uh, uh, say propels the geysers, not have there been any uh, geological changes, we should not be concerned about Yellowstone's erupting in a cataclysmic event. But Poland is either wrong on one front or he's being intentionally misleading, quote-unquote. There has been a major geological change that could literally affect the entire globe, one which he conveniently left out for various unknown reasons. But have no fear, anyone who is worried about interruption has fears which are unfounded, according to the report by National Geographic. 
the scientists and media outlets who wish to control public thought and opinion would like for anyone concerned to take off their tinfoil hat. Sometimes it feels like we're being conditioned and told what to care about and which things we should fear as opposed to allowing us the freedom to decide on our own. Is Yellowstone a threat? Maybe, maybe not. It's not our place to tell you what to think. We ask that you take your own thoughts into your hands and decide for yourself if Yellowstone is a viable threat. And this is now the latest concerning Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the Caldera Chronicles that come out every week. This is the March 11th statement, Bridge Over Troubled Water laying down infrastructure in Yellowstone's hydrothermal areas. We have here images of the Barrel Spring hydrothermal area in some restrictive topography. The road from Norris Geyser Basin to Madison Junction follows the Gibbon River through a tight valley with not much of a choice. The road threads, threads between the river and Barrel Spring over some very hot ground and it takes a feat of engineering to keep the road drivable through this hot area. Sometimes nature has a final say, as in 1942 when the National Park Service, this image was taken, the road is now passable uh, by uh, car and bison. Now a section of the porcelain basin loop boardwalk in the Norris Geyser Basin was removed because the ground below sections of the boardwalk became too hot and made charcoal of the wood footings that support the structure. So luckily enough, in this case, the boardwalk was shifted about three feet to avoid the new hot ground. And uh, these photos were taken uh, last year, 2018. So Yellowstone Caldera chronicles the weekly column written by the scientists. When it comes to building and maintaining infrastructure, the dynamic character of the environment often requires creative thinking and adaptivity. The long-term monitoring equipment and elements park infrastructure is running battle and constantly changing hydrothermal system and geological landscape. But with enough data and foresight, Yellowstone's geology team and maintenance crews can make informed decisions as to where to lay the roads and ro boardwalks and other facilities to make these structures as lasting and useful and safe as possible for visitors. The roadways and boardwalks that lead to visitors to the, to the Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic Spring and other iconic hydrothermal features wind through breathtaking but very hazardous terrain. In many hydrothermal areas, visitors stand on boardwalks elevated only inches above and feet away from the boiling springs and erupting geysers. But the same hot ground surrounding a hot spring may be tens of degrees cooler just underneath the boardwalk. For example, temperatures exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit were measured at one inch depth in the ground just two feet south of the new feature on Geyser Hill, near Old Faithful. Only a few feet under, underneath the boardwalk, temperatures dropped to about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. The placement of the boardwalk over colder ground is not coincidental. Yellowstone's geology team works closely to trail the boardwalk crews to map and meet the heat and the proposed uh, trail and boardwalk construction areas. They use thermal infrared cameras uh, essential for safety and planning as they're monitoring Yellowstone's hydrothermal system over time. They use the IR infrared remote censored imagery to map potential paths for new roadways. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. 
Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.